And I was asked to speak about two things that, have, that it's very hard to find the relationship between the two. <laughs> they, I was asked to speak about karma and Earth Day. <laughs> now, you know, go figure how we're... Uh, so I, I'm going to try. <laughs> but how I'd like to begin is for all of us to think of a time in our lives when we uh, were a victim. Okay? When, when, in other words, when somebody, you know, somebody or some event or something did us wrong. You follow? Right? Whether it was another person or a circumstance, you know, it wasn't our fault, but somehow or other we were victimized. Maybe um, uh, the, the student next to us was cheating on an exam and was asking us for an answer, and then we got in trouble, or something like, you know, something like that. So take uh, 30 seconds right now and try to seriously think about a time in your life when you were a victim. Uh, well, everyone understand the question? Any questions about the... Is it clear? Okay, so please think of a time. And if you can't think of... I've been victimized so many times, I can give you one of mine. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, just keep, let everyone give, have a 30 seconds here. <laughs> I'm a victim. I don't have any water to drink. <laughs> it always happens to me. <laughs> okay. Um, someone, do we have a, a roaming mic? I should have uh, asked for that before. Oh, great. Do you want to share? Seriously? This is not a funny, this is not a joke. Okay. Yeah, when I was in 11th grade in India, in school, and to my math teacher, mathematics teacher, um, like all the students were going to his personal coaching class, and I was not going. Mm -hmm. um, and my sister was teaching me mathematics, and I was doing really good. So he didn't like it, or I don't know what was the thing, but it's like all the students who were going and coaching in my classroom, they always used to make fun of that teacher. So when he was teaching, they used to throw chalk on him. So, <laughs> and just try to, you know, boo or whatever. And when the teacher looked back, he can't say anything because all of a sudden he was going in his classroom, you know, personal, and he was getting money out of it. So he always used to make me stand up and he used to slap me. I'm like, stop doing it. So I was a big time victim. My brother took revenge and he pushed him in the back. Like, oh, <laughs> really, really <honestly. laughs> but I mean, that was like, I did it three times. Thank you. Anyone else like to share theirs? You would? I should not the victim at such a young age. <laughs> Karma doesn't know its limits. So. Yes, sir. Um, so when we were playing soccer at school, the ball went over the fence. So t someone told me to get the ball, and I got in trouble. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay. Are you applauding that he got in trouble, or are you applauding? Someone else, one more. Any of the ladies? Any other men? But did you have a hand up? Anyone else? One more? Here. Yes, bro. I was, uh, a couple months ago, I was walking, walking the dogs, just walking down the street, and a car came up behind, and the guy just took a bottle of Gatorade and just chucked it and hit me right in the middle of the back. Oh. Uh -huh. So I'm going, I mean, I was a complete victim in that case, so I have no idea what even brought that on. But I mean, I mean karma somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now, so we all have our stories of being victims. Now what I want us to do is to take that same situation, look at it in a different way, through a different lens, and take full responsibility for that. Don't, you're not the victim. Take, take the blame, take full responsibility. And how does that look? It was my fault because I chose to climb over the fence and grab the ball. I didn't have to do that, right? Isn't it? 
as an example, or I could have developed a friendly relationship with this math teacher, or I could, you know, in other words, the idea, I mean, hopefully, I'll give you 15 seconds, think about it, and try to take responsibility, full responsibility, for what you previously thought had nothing to do with being your fault. Are, hopefully some of you are being successful. But the point is that it, things, uh, it depends on how we look at something. And we can't really control generally what happens to us. What's within our control is how we react to what happens to us. Isn't it? Right? Because there is such a thing as, as karma. Um, but how we react to that karma is within our free will. We'll get to that in a second. So there's a, you know, to use scientific terms or laboratory terms, there's a stimulus, and then there's a response. Very good. So there's a stimulus, and then there's a response. So, so many times throughout our, throughout our day, there's different stimuli that are, you know, coming upon us whether it's the, foot, the soccer ball going over the fence or the math teacher uh, uh, make, you know, giving us a good slap or whatever. There's so many different stimulus. Uh, and often we respond to that stimulus, uh, a stimuli without thinking much. There's a kind of a knee-jerk reaction. And for those of us who have studied the Bhagavad Gita, that knee-jerk reaction will often be there depending on the three modes of material nature, sattva, rajas, tamas, or some combination of those three, that's affecting us at that time. Okay? But Krishna is indirectly at least teaching us in the Gita is that before we have a response, there should be a pause. So stimulus, pause, response. Stimulus, then pause, then response. And that pause, that pause, of course, you know, uh, can be thinking about what would, what would Krishna want me to do? What is an appropriate thing to do? What is a uh, ethical thing to do? What's an honest thing to do? What's a proper thing to do? What's a caring thing to do? What's a loving thing to do, etc. You know, good stuff. Right? And because generally... If we're honest, probably most of our responses will be, uh, you know, more in the modes of passion and ignorance, uh, generally. So we want uh, our responses to the stimuli, because that's what's within our control, remember? It's not so much what happens to us, but what we have control over is how we react to what happens to us. And if we understand some principles about the law of karma then we understand that that will get a, uh, the way we react will create uh, a, a future for us. And of course, if it's a spiritual reaction, a Krishna conscious reaction, then our future is very bright. You look around the room and that's the kind of future we have to look forward to, being with Krishna in, in, the, uh, in the spiritual world. So this is where our free will exists. Um, sometimes we may individually, and many people when they look at Hinduism or think about Bhagavad Gita, they have this false conception that, um, <coughs> that we are, uh, what's the word? I'm, uh, just skip my mind. Fa fatalistic, right? That we just think, oh, you know, kyakure, it's, you know, it's just, uh, it is what it is. It's my karma. Nothing I can do about it. But that's not exactly, the, the, the understanding of karma and free will is more nuanced than that. Uh, we gave the example last night at your house. Uh, we were sitting together at the dinner table. Um, and I think it's a very a nice example that if we're going to fly from here to Los Angeles, say, right? Um, and once we get on the airplane, and as long as, you know, there's not some terrible disaster, but 99.9% .9 of the time, that airplane is going to 
Los Angeles, right? It's, there's nothing we can do. It's predetermined once we get on the plane, okay? But while we're on the plane, we have so many choices, right? We can read the Bhagavad Gita. We can talk to our neighbor. We can sleep. We can watch the movie. We can, you know, we can do, uh, we can read a, a book. We can put on our iPod and listen to whatever, right? We, there's so many different choices that we have. But the plane's going to L.A. Okay. So that's kind of what our life is about. There, Krishna very clearly in the Bhagavad Gita says that we are a soul, we are not our bodies, and we had previous lives. Is, there a, is this one? Is this the Bhagavad Gita? Okay. Chapter 4, verse 5. Of the Bhagavad Gita says, Bahuni me vyatitani. Anyone know the rest of it? Any Bhagavad Gita scholars here? I'm not a Bhagavad Gita scholar, but I know this verse, but I'll look it up to make sure I get it right. <laughs> so Krishna says, it's even the beginning of his Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. What does that mean? Krishna said, very good. Excellent. Bahuni. What you know what Bahu means? What does Bahu mean? Many. Bahuni may, Krishna, he's pointing to himself, uh, may vyatitani, which means uh, I've had many that have passed, many births have passed. Uh, well, the word janmani, janma, like janmastami, birth. Janmani tavachar arjuna. So you also, both you and I, we've had many, many manifestations, many births. Uh, tanaham, Krishna says, um, aham, I, tanyaham, veda sarvani. Veda means knowledge, knowing, yes. Sarvani, oh, I can remember all of them. Natvam, but you, Arjuna, <laughs> veta, natvam veta parantapa, but you, Arjuna, uh uh, you, you forgot them. So Krishna, if we believe at least Krishna's words, he says, we've had many births, but we don't... Oops. What was this? What's my response to that stimuli? Uh, oops. Uh, <clears throat> we can't remember them. Okay. But it's clear that, according to Krishna at least, that, um, <clears throat> that we've had births in our last life. And the birth that we take now, that's based on our previous karma. Okay, like, how many, raise your hand if you chose, at least consciously, you chose your parents. Did you? You mean, there wasn't like a list and you went, let's see. And like, like maybe a Chinese restaurant, one from column A and one from column B, you know. Right, okay. We didn't choose our parents. How many of us chose where we were born? How many of us chose what we look like? How many of us chose our gender? Right? Well, we didn't, we, at least, we, you know, consciously, no. But we could also say that by our activities, Previously, we did. As you, you know, even you, the, 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 the Bible also talks about karma in the sense it says, as you sow, so shall ye reap, right? So according to our previous activities, we, uh, we get all these things. We're handsome, we're ugly, we're rich, we're poor, we have a big nose. We don't, did you say, uh-huh? How am I gonna how am I gonna react to that stimulus? <laughs> if he says it's Krishna's mercy, I'll give him a little of Krishna's mercy. <laughs> yeah. um, so there are some things that at least now are without uh, are beyond our control. Hmm? Um, and there's that uh, serenity prayer. Anyone know that serenity prayer? How does it go that, my dear Lord, please give me the, what is it? Uh, courage to, 
Yeah, but the first line, let me say, I, wrote, I kind of wrote down a note to accept things that I cannot change. You have the courage to change the things that I can change and the, the, the wisdom to know the difference, right? Now, that's the prayer of, uh, also that's mentioned in the Alcoholics Anonymous. So we know that anyone who just knew that prayer is an alcoholic. <laughs> and there's a uh, complimentary Bhagavad Gita for you at the... Uh, <laughs> hey, I knew it, you know, so... Uh, um, but this is, this is, this is wisdom. Because... And this is, you know, to, to know, okay, well, I can't, uh, there are things that I can change, there are things that I can't change, and, to, and the, re the real tricky thing is to know the, the difference, because it's extremely frustrating to try to change things that can't be changed. Or, equally frustrating, it, like, like the hardest thing to do, I think, probably, is to change another person. Anyone ever, any parent here ever had that experience with your children? Yes. Right? Don't we all want them to, you know, have a 4.0 average and to be extremely, you know, touch the feet of their parents when they get up in the morning and, and chant the whole Bhagavad Gita every day? And, you know, they, we want them to be Maha Bhagavats and IIT scholars, right? Isn't it? Okay. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, marry the richest, most handsome or beautiful person in the universe and have wonderful children that, you know, and blah, 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 right? Um, and it doesn't always work out that way, if you ever have that experience also. Um, so so, this, so there, this, this understanding is important, though, to understand that, yes, we have our karma. And that will produce things in our life that we can't change. And, yes, we have our free will. And we should be very careful not to play the blame game, right? To blame, uh, it's my parents' fault, it's, that, it's the government's fault, it's, the, it's Toyota's fault, it's this, it's whatever, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Because, you know, there, there's that, say, that, that saying, right? If you point one finger at somebody, you're pointing three fingers at yourself. So that is, a, that is a Krishna conscious outlook on it. That a, a Krishna conscious person takes responsibility. Takes responsibility for their actions. And they act, or we should all act in a way. Now listen, this is kind of the summation of everything. So we, um, we should do our best, not just say, well, you know, I got my karma coming, so whatever. Right? Yeah, you know, if it's my karma to get straight A's, I'll get straight A's without studying. You know, it's just, it's my karma, Prabhu. Right? That's not what Krishna says. Krishna says, karma nevari karaste. What's the next line? Mafaleshu kadachan. Yeah, this is the, this is most people, many people in India, they know the first line. <laughs> right? Isn't it? Karma nevari karaste. Ma, uh, what's the next line? That's, yeah. Right, <laughs> that you have a right to perform your duty. And they say, yes, I'm doing my duty. And that's good. Believe me, that's very good. That's pious. Most, a lot of people in other, you know, don't do their duties, right? But Krishna also, of course, he says, mafalashu, but don't be attached to the fruit. Some people, Vishnu, you know, don't want to hear that part. But we, 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 uh, we do our best. We, we try our best. Mm -hmm. We try our best as, uh, in our work, in our, if we're a student in our studies, you're trying your best? Very good. Honest man. Um, <clears throat> and we try our best in our relationships. We try to be kind to other people. We try to treat other people as we would like them to treat us. Hmm? Um, we, uh, and we serve, other, we serve devotees. You know, we do Vaishnava Seva and Jiva Doya. We try to help people when they're in need. And we leave the results to Krishna. We do our best, and what is it? Man proposes, and God, it's a fact. We, you know, you try our best. You know, everyone's trying their, not everyone, but many people are trying their best to become Kurapatis, but not everyone does it, right? But, but we try our best, and the result ultimately is, a, is, a, is our karma, and ultimately it's up to Krishna's loving hand. 
So we, we leave things to Krishna and we feel dependent upon Krishna and we feel his kind glance upon us. And we also act in a way that doesn't entangle us any further in this world, but will lead to a very bright future. We'd have to take another birth or two, or, or hopefully a, a birth in the spiritual sky, serving Krishna eternally. Now, how am I going to relate this to Earth Day? Uh, <laughs> you don't even know. Um, the Earth is actually an amazing thing. Earth Day is the 22nd, is that right? Yes, okay. If you think about it, everything that we see comes from the Earth, right? Even cell phones, right? And does this come from the Earth? Yeah, everything comes from the Earth. Um, so Mother Earth is really a mother, just like the mother is, is there to provide for the child. So Mother Earth provides, you know, everything, all the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear. So part of being responsible, we were talking about responsibility, here's the connection, uh, is, to, um, is to be conscious, to be thankful. Ultimately being thankful to, uh, to Krishna for providing Bhumi Devi, providing the earth, which uh, in, the, in, the fourth, in the Shastra it says, Sarva Kama Dukhamahi, that the earth fulfills all of our desires, all of our needs. Um, so we should uh, appreciate that Krishna has given us Mother Earth and we should try not to uh, uh, cause her any undue harm. But uh, we can give thanks on the 22nd or any day for the gifts that she's given that have been ultimately given by the Supreme Lord Krishna. So, some questions or comments? Yes, Prabhu. Do we have a microphone? No, go ahead. I'll repeat it. Oh, here it is. So uh, how, how do you know when you've uh, tried your best, you know, and how do you know to distinguish the difference between that which is you have no control over and that which you can't change? Well, you just had two, two questions, right? Okay. How do you know when you tried your best? Anyone want to answer that? <laughs> Excuse me, Prabhu? You can't do any better, okay. Yes? That you've done the best you can? These are good answers. If you're not sure, you haven't, probably haven't done it. Um, Gunagrahi Maharaj was here recently, right? He had a saying uh, that he told me years ago. Better not best, can't take rest till your good gets better and your better gets best. Yeah, you want that again? <laughs> Better, not best, can't take rest till your good gets better and your better gets best. You like that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I have a little fan club here. It's very good. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are a little skeptical, but they like me. You know? uh, <clears throat> so, you know, there's the external trying hard, and then there's the internal word that we usually use, sincerity. I don't know if you know where the word sincere comes from. It's an interesting word. Uh, I can't remember if it's Latin or Greek. I think it's Greek. But it comes from two words, sin, sira. And sin doesn't mean sin in this case. Uh, you know, like the bad thing that we talk about sometimes. And, um, but sin means without, and sira means wax. And uh, in those days, sometimes when, they were, when people were selling marble, and there was some flaw in the marble, they would fill it with wax. Right? And that way they would cheat the uh, person who was buying it. So when they say, sincere, sincere, there's no wax. So when we see that there's no wax in our heart, when we see that, uh, especially in, since we're talking in Krishna conscious terms, we're trying our best to satisfy Krishna. Even though we may not be great devotees or this or that, but we are sincerely trying to uh, serve Krishna to the best of our abilities with a sincere wish that he's pleased with our, by our activities. Uh, I would say that's a, a, you know, that's a sign that we're, we're, I don't know if it's our best, we're trying very hard. And I think it's, but I think it's very much an internal thing. 
I don't think there's any kind of like best meter that you can go around the room, but I think it's a very much uh, uh, an internal thing. And probably, you know, when we're honest, we'd say, well, I probably could do a little bit better or be a little bit more sincere, but still, you know, better, not best is still something. And the second part of your question was, Well, that serenity prayer says uh, have wi it takes some wisdom. It may take uh, talking to other people about it. You know, sometimes when we're in the thick of things, or in terms of Bhagavad Gita, when the modes of passion, ignorance, cloud our consciousness, right? Sometimes we don't see sometimes, you know, what do they say, the forest and the trees, we don't see so clearly. And especially if we're kind of emotionally involved in a situation. You ever had that experience? If you're emotionally caught up in something, uh, or you're angry, or, or uh, upset in some way, you know, sometimes you don't see things so clearly. So sometimes when you talk to someone who's a little detached from the situation, is looking at a little bit more objectively, uh, they can give us, you know, some advice, or at least their perspective, which may be uh, from a more sattvic perspective than ours. So that, that's, that's, uh, that's one thing, and um, I think maybe also we can be analytical. We can look at this situation. What can I do in this situation? Right? Um, and sometimes it takes some creative thinking. Like, let's say you planned an outdoor event this weekend, and it rained. Right? It's been, you know, this cold weather. Is there much we can do about that? Thank you. See? <laughs> no. But we might be able to make some alternative, you know, but we, so we might say, oh, you know, geez, it's raining, you know, my bad luck, my bad karma, you know, oh, I'm going to get God for that one, whatever. Or we may start, you know, thinking outside the box. Well, okay, we planned this, but maybe we can move to an internal uh, in, uh, inside uh, venue or reschedule. And, you know, when you're not blaming, you can actually start thinking creatively and thinking intelligently or proactively. But if you're just saying, you know, gee, you know, angry at the world and things like that, you can't really get much accomplished. Is that okay? Thank you. Nice questions. Other questions? Really? What, where does metal come from? Is there a geologist in the house? Thank you. And where, where, where does ore come from? deep in the ground. It comes from Earth. Okay? You're satisfied? Thank you. No, I don't need that. I have my, my own. <laughs> Another question? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, I hope you're not going to ask where plastic comes from. <laughs> uh, you talk about the actions, uh, stimuli, the pause, and the response. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm thinking about the situation where a person dies in an accident. Yes. He had no time to respond. No. He paid the ultimate price. So, is it through because of his previous karma that he had to leave this earth so early, or...? Yeah, generally uh, that would be our understanding, yeah. Um, and then we could say, see, this, this gets into something that would be a three-hour lecture, <laughs> right? And I'm not going to bore anyone with a three-hour lecture. But it's a, um, you know, in one sense, it's right at the very core of believing in spirituality. And that is, you know, is God fair? And if you think of something like that, you would say, well, what's fair about that? Right? And one of the things that attracted me to Krishna consciousness was this understanding of karma. Because... I, you know, it, it didn't make sense to me. I, 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 I grew up in a town that really was like if you lived, you know, there really was a railroad track. And it really was if you lived on this side of the railroad track, you were poor and, and whatever, and you lived on that side and you were extremely affluent. You know, it was really like that. So I remember as growing up, I was saying, well, you know, why is one person born on that side of the railroad track, another person born on this side of the railroad track? You know, and I, I won't, it's not appropriate or necessary to mention my the religious upbringing that I have, but there weren't really so many, at least for me, there weren't so many answers to that. 
And when I came across the Bhagavad Gita, and I heard that, you know, we've had previous lives, and we, we, have, we, we bring to this life our karma and our activities and our responsibility for activities, um, that, that helped me, you know, that helped me deal with this, uh, the problem of evil, as they call it. Right? Now, um, it does take a little bit of a non-sentimental attitude to look at, you know, like, a, like you're saying, a car accident like that. Um, but, you know, when we have the vision of eternity, um, now how should I react to the stimulus of the mobile phone? Uh, well, you call it cell phones in this country, right? We call it mobile phones in, uh, in India. Um, but, you know, as, Chris, as that verse I just quoted, Krishna said many, and literally that means, uh, you know, koti, 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 for those, you know, thousands, hundreds, thousands, you know, this is one uh, life of so many lifetimes. In the Bhagavad Gita, 8th chapter, Lord Brahma's life is calculated at, anyone know? 311 trillion years. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada says, that is a lightning flash in eternity. It's like, when I read that, I was, wow, you know? I, thought, I really thought that was cool when I read that. You know, that he said that, you know, 311 trillion years of lightning flash. So what to speak of our, you know, our lifetime here? So, it, so again, I, I, the, answer, the direct answer to your question is yes. And I tried to, you know, just embellish it a little bit. Is that okay? Thank you. I think there was one last question. Yes, Prabhu? Or over here? Yes. No. Uh, earlier you were mentioning uh, victimization or you were mentioning karma yeah. and how things are, you know, to prove we can take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if someone's a child and what if someone's victimized? How does that, do they deserve that? Or, you know, you know that, that type of victimization where someone doesn't really have a choice, someone, you know, someone else is imposing their will and their desires upon someone who's okay. not at the ability to question themselves, or question their place in life, or question um, where they are in the karmic circle. I, I mean, I found, I found it really hard, you know, just kind of think and say, well, well is, that, is that their fault? Yes, well, certainly, you know, that exercise has its limitations, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, we would still understand that there, you know, um, that there's a bigger picture but certainly, yes, we wouldn't want to uh, see. There's also um, a very important part of being a devotee of Krishna is we understand the theology and the philosophy, right? And then we have our practical life and, and dealing with the world in a practical way. And connecting the two is very important. Uh, we've had experiences even in our society when we only stay on this level it, we, can, we can adopt a certain kind of insensitivity, right? Like I could just say, oh, it's that kid's karma, you know? And people walk away and say, whoa, you know, what a cold-hearted person the, those Krishnas are, right? Um, so, like, I'll give you an example. When Srila Prabhupada, um, he opened up the, uh, there's, there's a picture of Mayapur here? Oh, okay. Uh, the, the first building that we had in Mayapur, which is the, our world headquarters in West Bengal, there was a big feast that they served, and they invited many of the life members from Calcutta to come to that feast. And um, at, and in those days, uh, well, still, often in India, the, the, the food was served on a leaf plates. You know, like, and usually in Bengal, it's banana leaves. It's a very nice way to eat, actually, <laughs> banana leaves. Um, so, and afterwards, after the people eat, usually they're thrown in some kind of pile a little bit away. And about a half hour after the feast was finished, Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada heard um, some ruckus in the back, some, some noise. And there were some dogs barking, and there were some children kind of screaming. Or, and what was happening is these children from the surrounding area, they were trying to eat the leftovers from the feast. And the dogs were trying to eat the leftovers from the feast. And there was a competition for the leftovers. 
And when Srila Prabhupada saw that, literally tears came down his eyes. And that's where he said, for those of us in ISKCON, the famous saying that, uh, that ideally, no one within a 10-mile radius of a temple should go hungry. And that day, he started something called the ISKCON Food Relief Project, which has now uh, morphed into uh, Food for Life. So he didn't think, oh, it's those kids' karma, you know, tough luck. You know, that's not, uh, a devotee is, uh, is compassionate and caring and loving, even though they do understand, yes, there may be some karma involved, but, they, but that, that doesn't mean the result of that philosophical understanding is cold-heartedness. Um, but rather, you know, how, so of course he didn't just say, feed them, you know, uh, KFC. Right, but he did say, you know, feed them prasadam, spiritual food. So there was a spiritual element to that compassion, but certainly, uh, you know, when a devotee sees something like you just uh, you just uh, mentioned, you know, in the heart they just, oh, how awful! What are the parents must be going through, and this and that. You know, they uh, they deal on a very human level, even though there also is this understanding of of the soul and how, in one sense, that person hasn't died, they're eternal. Is that, is that okay? Thank you for that question. Do you want the microphone, please? Because uh, a lot of people listen on the internet and stuff. You're on camera. <laughs> Go. So would it be right to say karma is nothing but the choice of the free will that we made before? Exactly. Exactly. So free will does exist, and that's the result. Karma is the result. Yes. Yes, because Krishna, he, he's, and he mentions this in the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, if you, am I holding you guys up? I know I hear stomachs growling. I'll just, uh, two more minutes, all right? Uh, I, maybe it's just me, you know? <laughs> One time a uh, devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, um, Srila Prabhupada, are you hungry? And Srila Prabhupada said, I can understand that you're hungry. Right? Right? Because there's, you know, there's a saying in, in, I think it's Sanskrit, perhaps it's Hindi, but I think it's Sanskrit, Atmavan Manyate Jagat, that you're thinking one way and you think the whole world thinks the same way. Right? So I'm hungry, so I'm thinking you guys are all starving, you know. <laughs> uh, now I, I, Joe, I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, you, oh. Ah, yes. Because there's a question that comes up in the Bhagavad Gita. Who is the doer? Who actually does activities? Okay? Now, we could, the, um, it, it, you know, because it says, Krishna says, Sarva Karna Karnam, or Lord Brahma says about Krishna that he's the cause of all causes. And if you know, if you remember, Mahatma Gandhi had a very nice saying that he said, Not a blade of grass moves without the will of the Lord. Right? You've heard that from Mahatma Ji? Yes. Right? So he said that. And Srila Prabhupada appreciated that statement. He, he repeated that many times, not a blade of grass moves. So, but at the same time, we understand, if you look at that picture right back there, everyone looking at that? That's God's program. He likes to dance. You know, that's his, you know, that's what he does. Um, and he doesn't, you know, so he does, he does other things through his energy. He creates this whole world and it's all running, and the planets aren't banging into each other, et cetera, through his deputed, uh, you know, through his ministers and, you know, the demigods, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, is it God's fault when something bad happens? Is it the living entities? Sometimes it's, is it, Krishna will say it's the three modes of material nature that act. So which one is it? So the example is given, let's say, you. What's your name, young man? Kapil Dave? Abu. Abu Dave? Abu Dave. Okay. Abu Dave, D E V. Abu Dave, okay. Very good. Can you lift 50 kgs, 100 pounds weight? No. Can you lift 30? No. Can your dad? I think he can. I'm sure he can. Let's... So, if you were to, if, if you were in a room and, you, and you're like, oh, and 
you're really trying to lift that. And then your father comes behind you, and he, from behind, he helps you. And then you have it up there, and you're so proud of yourself. Oh. Right? Now, who lifted that? Well, let's think about that for a second, because if you didn't try, he would have just walked into the next room. He never would have lifted that weight. But he saw you trying, and then he helped you. Right? Yes. Yeah, so your father can be compared to Krishna, and you can be compared to the living entity. That we, we you know, we propose, we do activities, but ultimately um, Krishna is uh, helping us. But still, if we didn't make the attempt, it never would have happened. So one of our great acharyas, Vishnu of Chakravarti Thakur, says that if the living entity wasn't the doer, then why would we have all this scripture, all this shastra telling us do this and don't do that? Why would there be so many lessons if, you know, if it's like not up to us? So we are the doer, but we're not the only one. We also have our father behind us lifting the weight. Or, like you said, Krishna, who's helping carry things out. So there's, you know, it's a little, it's, it's this combination. But yes, your point, your point is well taken, and that's really where responsibility comes. We accept the words of Krishna. We understood that our karma is based on what we chose to do, albeit in a lifetime that we don't remember. And then we really become responsible. There's all the, you can take these courses, seminars, on becoming a fully responsible person, but really a devote, a, 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 one who studies the Bhagavad Gita can become a really, really, really responsible person by understanding that even their karma um, is based on, uh, they can take responsibility based on their previous activities. So I think we should stop because I'm starving. <laughs> No, because it's late, it's late. You know. So um, thank you very much, and uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.